for the main plenary session. I welcome Ms. Ranjana Chopra, IAS, Additional Secretary and Financial Advisor, Ministry of Culture, with a huge round of applause for the welcome address. To setting the context, may I take the pleasure to welcome Shri Kamlesh T. Patilji Daji with a huge round of applause and lots of love to the holy feet of Daji, the current spiritual guide of the heartfulness movement and the president of Sri Ramchandra Mission and author. He offers heartfulness practices that develop authenticity, compassion and inner peace through a simple meditation by, by yogic transmission We also take the pleasure to welcome His Grace Sri Gaur Gopal Das Ji from ISKCON. Sri Gaur Gopal Das Ji, a Hindu monk, lifestyle coach, motivational speaker, and a former electrical engineer. He's been speaking across the world for over two decades and has even spoken at the United Nations and at the British Parliament. Warm welcome. Gopal Das Ji. I take the pleasure to welcome Swami Atma Priyananda from Ramakrishna Mission, Indian University Administrator and a Sanyasin of the Ramakrishna Order. He was the first Vice Chancellor of Ramakrishna Mission, Vivekananda University. He joined the Ramakrishna Mission in 1978. A huge round of applause, ladies and gentlemen. We also take the pleasure to welcome Sister Usha Banji from Brahma Kumaris, a senior Raja Yoga meditation teacher and a management trainer of the Brahma Kumaris Aishwarya Vishwavidyalaya based on the global headquarters in Mount Abu with her innate qualities, capabilities and the Supreme Father's blessings. She has focused her strength and speciality into a meaningful channel. She is a practical example of applied spirituality. Sister Usha Banji. We take the pleasure to welcome Sri Tridandi Chinna Sriman Narayana Ramanuja Chinnaji or Swamiji, Vedic scholar, spiritual leader, known for his discourses on Sri Vaishnavism. He is the designer and the planner of Statue of Equality, a statue dedicated to Ramanuja Acharya in Hyderabad. is a guiding factor behind the Telangana state government's Yadadri temple. He is one of the few jeers who has accepted disciples irrespective of their caste. Padma Bhushan, Sri Tridandi, Chinna Sriman Narayana, Ramanuja Jir Swamiji. We take the pleasure to welcome all the gurus for the plenary session with a huge round of applause, lots of love and devotion to the holy feet of the great gurus on the dais. I now hand over to Mrs. Ranjana Chopra, IAS Additional Secretary, Ministry of Culture for her opening remarks. Over to you, Madam. नमस्कार भारत सरकार के संस्कृति मंत्रालय की तरफ से मैं आप सभी का हार्दिक अभिनंदन और स्वागत करती हूं मंच पर विराजमान सम्मानस्पद दाजी सम्मानस्पद गौर गोपाल दास जी स्वामी आत्मप्रिय नंद जी सिस्टर उषा बेन हिज होलीनेस चिन्ना जयर स्वामी जी मेरे समक्ष उपस्थित सब साधु मंडली सबको मेरा नमन आई वंस अगेन वेलकम ऑल ऑफ यू ऑन बिहाफ ऑफ मिनिस्ट्री ऑफ कल्चर गवर्नमेंट ऑफ इंडिया एज यू आर ऑल ऑलरेडी अवेयर अंडर द डायरेक्शन ऑफ ऑनरेबल प्राइम मिनिस्टर ऑफ आर कंट्री मिनिस्ट्री ऑफ कल्चर हैड लॉन्च आज़ादी का अमृत महोत्सव 
to celebrate 75 years of India's independence. During the course of the Azadi Ka Amrit Mahotsav, various events were organized throughout the country. These events touched upon the various facets of our cultural heritage. We were able to organize music festivals, dance festivals, literary conventions, and also commemorate the memories of iconic personalities of our country. During the course of these events, we were very gratified to see that we were not only able to revisit these cultural facets of our rich civilizational heritage, we were also able to rejuvenate them. While these programs were being organized, a harmony was created throughout the country. Just to give you a few examples, Vitasta, which I'm sure all of you are aware, is an old name of River Jhelum. Vitasta as an ode to the state of Kashmir was celebrated in the southern states of our country. To draw upon the historical pathways and linkages between Varanasi and Tamil Nadu, Tamil Kashi Sangamam was organized. To reinstill among the citizenry of our nation, Har Ghar Tiranga was organized, which actually reinstilled amongst all of us pride in our national symbols. And finally, we ended Azadi Ka Amrit Mohotsav by celebrating Meri Mati Mera Desh, in which soils from various parts of the country were brought to Delhi, were mixed, and on this stratum of soil, a beautiful forest has been created in the middle of Delhi. While we were doing all these activities, one thing that actually emerged very, very strongly was that when we look back into our civilizational and cultural heritage, what stands and what shines out is that we are, without any doubt, a civilization of knowledge. And when we say the civilization of knowledge, the fountainhead of this knowledge actually is not only the written word, it is actually the revealed word which has been revealed by Brahm himself to the sages. When we talk about this perspective, we find that we almost transcend this world and move into the realm of spirituality. So I won't be wrong in case I say that ours is a spiritual civilization. And to celebrate the spirituality of the land that is India, Ministry of Culture, thought of, structured, and envisaged the program where we are all honored and privileged to be a part of today. It is with a lot of humility and at the same time honor I see that we have been able to provide a platform where divine souls have come together to give a message of harmony, brotherhood, and peace. Mera ye poorn vishwas hai ki aap sabhi mahan bhavo ki upasthati se jo sandesh shanti aur sneh ka vishv ke sab kono mein jayega vehi is karakram ki safalta ka pratik banega. Ant mein, mein phir se aap sabhi ko hardik swagat karke apni vani ko yehi viram deti hun. Dhanyavad. Jai Hind. Dhanivad Ranjana Chopra ji, thank you very much. Ladies and gentlemen, please put your hands together for the person who has initiated, who has inspired with his golden words, golden vision. You are the experiment, you are the experimenter, and you are the outcome. It gives us great pleasure to welcome Shri Kamlesh T. Patilji, popularly, lovingly called as Daji, global guide of heartfulness to his, for his valuable address.
My heart will pronounce Sister Ranjana Ji, Gaur Gopal Das Ji, Sri Atma Priyanan Ji, Tulsa Ji, and Chinmaya Karu Ji. Thank you. Revered sages who are present here, and my very dear sisters and brothers, such an opportunity of coming together for a greater goal. The world has witnessed so-called religions, so-called faiths, dividing people. But we should not blame religions or the faith. Mr. Jain, who is seated amongst us, reminded me of Kofi Annan's statement that faith is not the problem. Problems arise with faithful ones. Faithful ones are the one who creates the problem unnecessarily. Religion, religious leaders, they have holy purpose. They have promised, they have devoted their lives, they have sacrificed their regular comforts and are at the service of humanity. All these religions are garlands, just as we see beautiful flowers here. Brahma Kumari is blooming with love and fragrance, trying to bring Brahma Vidya. Is con movement bringing about, you know, the fragrance of love and bhakti. Sikhism trying to bring something beyond us, trying to bring unification, one God. Islam, peace be upon the brothers and the prophet. There is no solid brotherhood like the one you will find in Islam. Christianity, full of love and compassion. Buddhism advocates self-efforts, self-penance. Jainism, utter penances, simplicity, purification. Imagine what would happen to all of us if we embrace all these qualities in one package. Think over it. I can also say I am the son of Krishna. I can also say I am the product of Brahma Kumaris. I can also say I am the son of Prophet Muhammad. I can also say I'm son and brother of Lord Jesus. And it can go on and on and on, you see. Why must we divide each other? Whenever I find a word like tolerance, I spent almost 30 years in the United States doing business. The word tolerance it has become intolerable kind. Everybody's talking of tolerance, but no one has tolerance. Recently, I learned about Ministry of Tolerance being established in United Arab Emirates. And I smile with pity, with my heart aching with such words, tolerance, that I have to tolerate? What nonsense is this? Imagine I tell my wife, or you tell your spouse, honey, I tolerate you. What will happen? Or you tell your guru, I tolerate you. There are some individuals who keep saying that. When you find a gurus who are dictators, there are all types of gurus in this world. Some are making money, left and right sucking the blood of innocent ones. We have to recognize them. Get away from this idea of tolerating the differences. We are not here to tolerate each other. We are here to accept. Acceptance is the key.
accept with joy. My master, my beloved master used to say, had the Indian sages were born in or born on the North Pole, would they have recommended vegetarian food? Think over it. All these adjustments are made according to the environment. We should not become critical of what you cannot do. But see the situation, why they are doing what they are doing, and why we are doing what we are doing. If they can respect me, I have to respect them. This mutual trust, mutual respect, mutual acceptance is the way forward. If you cannot adjust, if you cannot adapt to this evolving phenomena, you know the story of evolution, like dinosaurs, will also disappear. The differences can ruin us. Instead of becoming the uniting factor, religions have, rather the faithful ones, have divided many religious groups and communities. And that's very painful because religion, religare, rejoining, rejoining whom? Each other. And when we are connected with each other, only then we can dream of uniting with the Lord, uniting, united with that ultimate divinity. Is that not the purpose of all of us? That the drop merges in the ocean, raindrops falling in the ocean, becoming the ocean, and we are all that, each one, each Atman, a raindrop, becoming the ocean eventually. The dissolution, Ultimate dissolution, ultimate merger is the goal. Can oil drop merge in the ocean? It can float eternally. It can never become part of it. It only means my qualities, my real essence must match with that, with that of the ultimate if I have to merge with that. Otherwise, you can remain in a closest proximity with the ocean, but you can never merge. That will be very sad. Dogmas and beliefs, they are good. Religions, all religions carry these dogmas and beliefs. God is everywhere. It's one of the beliefs. When you ask your mother or father, do you believe in God? The simple answer comes, why are you asking such questions? Don't you think I believe? Sometimes such questions can make them angry also. But you ask them, why do you believe? They say, oh, my mother says so, my father says so, our scripture says so, our dharma says so. But mommy, what do you say? She will not have any answer. We have to find the answers from within our heart. Someone asked my master a beautiful question. Babuji, can you show me God? And you were wondering what answer he will give. And prompt him the answer, and he says, Suppose if I show you God, how will you know it's God? So there comes the role of spirituality. Religion gives us the idea of presence of some higher entity, and we believe those words. We trust in our parents, trust in our religion. So faith begins with belief. Now when you're talking of faith, recently I learned about Hazrat Pir Inayat Khan, who was born in the early 19th century. 
and who went to the West trying to spread Sufism in the West. When he seeks the blessings of his Murshid, his Guru, Guru blesses him with one statement, May your faith be strengthened. And in the beginning, he didn't realize what he was talking about. Maybe he would say, may you be more successful, may you be more productive, may you be more spiritual. But he said, may your faith be strengthened. But we have faith, we all have faith, but there is a spectrum of faith. Like we have spectrum of light, frequencies are from low to the high or high to the lower. Everything has a frequency. So is in the faith, in love. In hate also there is frequency. And how can we strengthen the faith? Just by believing, will my faith be strengthened? No. Faith is strengthened by my personal experience. In science, there is no room for faith. If I throw an apple up, apple is bound to fall. If I touch the electric socket, I am going to have the shock. I don't have to believe in it. I don't have to have faith in it. Apple is going to fall back. Spirituality being esoteric, the same thing you may, not, you may do, same meditation you may perform day after day, you perform and other person also performs, outcome of both will be different. We all meditate in the same place. Each and every one will have a different experience, different result of the process. And each one's results will guide them. Guide them how? To their heart. If you read Vedas and Upanishads very carefully, there is more than 100 times reference to the heart. Lord Krishna also says in Gita, also, he says, I dwell in every heart of any, every living being. And think over, where are we searching for God? Vedas, Upanishads, Gita, they all talk of the heart. Presence of the Lord is in the heart. Experience the presence in the heart. But our way of search outward, is outbound. How can you succeed in such a case? Even when you are face to face with the murti you worship, with the belief, with faith, with love, with adoration, with reverence, what happens to you there? Have you watched people walking around, waiting in line to enter the Tirupati temple? All with a lot of faith, but as soon as you reach the deity, what happens to you? You close your eyes. And what are you trying to do there? Trying to feel something that may happen in your heart. Isn't it? You could have done that at home also. Even politicians, may there be wisdom in them. Congress fellow will go there, my Lord, may I be the winner. BJP fellow will go there, my Lord, may I be the winner. And they keep throwing cash. You think that cash will be taken to Vaikuntham? You are only fooling gods. And every religion, every religion without an exception are successfully using two weapons. One of fear that if you don't do, this may happen to you. You may go to hell after your death and you are scared. You become chicken. And there is another bigger weapon, temptation. Temptation of heaven. All that is being rejected to be performed here, 
all that celibacy you have penance for, you expect everything reversed in the heaven. You want everything that you avoided to be gifted there. This is a transaction. Unwise transaction, foolish transaction. A real spiritual seeker would say, My Lord, I don't even know you. Be honest. Can anyone amongst here, present here, with respect to all, put your hand on your heart and say, I have experienced God. And that's what we like to say, my God, I don't know whether you are there or not. I like to experience your presence in my heart. You should sit with supplicant mode, with reverence, with pujya bhav, without conditioning ourselves that God is like this or God is like that. Remove all indoctrination that we have received and bombarded with from our childhood. Even Lord Krishna during his lifetime, how many people could understand him? Even Prophet Muhammad, even Lord Jesus Christ, how many could understand these great personalities during their lifetime? Poor fellow was put on the cross. Prophet Muhammad, he was hunted from Medina to Makkah and Makkah to Medina, saving, trying to save his life. People wanted to kill him. Lord Krishna, he was hated by the majority and loved by very few. And who could understand his avatar purusa status? None. Even when Arjun was sold the universal form, he said, my, please come back to the, my friendlier form. I like that one better. I don't like this one. It's very fearful. So even while showing the real form, you cannot recognize. Even seeing the real thing, you cannot recognize a personality. How are you going to understand? By seeing the imageries. Don't talk of Sadda. It's out of fear and temptation. Your Sadda is a whitewash. Then you meditate and make that dogmatic belief, which is good, it's better than not believing. But the next better step would be to experience the presence, to experience the Lord in your heart. That's why we say, my heart is the laboratory. In this laboratory, I will run my experiment, whether God is there or not, and see the results, and see if this result can transform my personality. If this can change me, and once we experience, then we say, yes, I have realized my knowledge is verified, my belief system is verified, and the next step will be even more painful. Having experienced creates more pain. I'm telling you this from my personal experience. You will understand this, the tragedy of momentary experience, but you look forward to it again and again. It should have become permanent. So the practices. Let me give you another example that if you happen to be with your friend and that friend happens to be one of those Ambani's, Many gurus flock around him, enjoy the hospitality of such wealthy people. Next thing what happens? You are there for three months perhaps. In heart of your heart, what do you think? I'm enjoying this, I'm having a great experience, but I wish I was also as rich, isn't it? 
So divine experiences, however great, they are better than simple knowledge. But I have to become that experience. Divine experiences are like carrots sown to a donkey, so the donkey keeps walking, keeps carrying the load. Without these experiences, no yogi would ever practice yoga. So, from experience, I must learn how to become. Experience must teach me to become divine myself. And that also is not the complete journey. My experience shows, even the states of Satchitanan, which people claim it is the ultimate, ultimate experience of the Sahasra Dal Kamal, but there is much more awaiting us. SDK is a diversion. It's your test, last test in your journey. If you are trapped with this Anandam, you are finished. You will enjoy this eternally, this Anandam. But remember, it's like a worm that relishes the cow dung. We must transcend even the anandam. It's easy to lose your family members. It's easy to say, become ascetic, leave your family. It's very easy. Any fool can do that. But to renounce anandam and that the ultimate anandam, it's not a job of a bigger, small soul. It needs courage. One must go beyond. And that is true renunciation. Say goodbye even to anandam. From being, you enter the zone of non-being. And it is from this non-being that every being emerged. It is this promise for which I have to dissolve my differences, that if I maintain these differences right from the beginning, I would be trapped in this jail of religions. I must free myself, because all these religions are there because of the times, when so-and-so was born in particular time, particular place, they coined certain rules, certain maxims, certain lifestyle orders which may not be applicable in modern world. I'll complete my talk with the last story that I wanted to share. At the age of 18, I wanted to become a monk. The passion was there. I was in search of my Ramakrishna, the great Paramahansa. I wanted to become like Swami Vivekananda. I said, why not? And I muscled myself, took courage in my heart, and left my home. So in the morning, I didn't say even one thing to my parents, but with closed eyes, with respectful heart, I left home. I reached to Narbada. There was a big Shiva temple, very ancient temple. And there were many Aghori Babas, almost a dozen of them. I just sat there, watching them, what they were doing. And there was a very respectable elderly person there, also Aghori Baba. He must have been 80 plus. He kept watching me, and as the sun was setting, he came to me and he asked, my son, what are you doing here? So I pleaded, would you become my guru? Would you accept me as your shishya? I would serve you to the best of my abilities. There were tears in his eyes. Bete, my son, I am now 80 plus. I have not experienced God. I have not felt anything so far. Now I have become a beggar. All these people, they serve me. 
they go from house to house. What have we become? You have the chance to serve your family and you will find godliness present there. The same month, I happened to meet a trainer of heartfulness while I was in the third year of pharmacy college in Ahmedabad. In the very first session of meditation that was given with Pranahuti, I was transported to a zone I cannot even describe today. She was a very simple lady, also the trainer of artfulness, trained under Babaji Sahab, Sri Ramachandra Ji. There, in the mid of meditation, a flash occurred, with the left hand raised, no face to be seen, with a golden aura, and I knew this is Ram Krishna Paramahansa. My eyes melted, I was gone. No idea where I was. It's like, you know, you were absolutely gone, finished, zong. She, my trainer, the preceptor, she kept touching my knee. Vaskiji, that's all, are you? Then she herself started crying. She said, what some scars you have brought with you? Tomorrow I will send you to another preceptor who is better than me. So she sent me to another preceptor and I started my journey on heartfulness with transmission, with pranahuti. And this is how I began and now I am in front of you all, a product of heartfulness. Not a day will repeat, not a single day of your sadhana will repeat where your experience will not be different. Every day will be different because always moving, always moving means movement like Atman. Atman is moving towards Brahman and slowly as expansion happens, as the evolution of consciousness happens, Moment now becomes expansion, thinking becomes contemplation, and we move towards subtler and subtler and subtler realms. Many of you may ask a question what is this pranahuti? How different it is from pranapratistha and saktipath? We'll take this up some other session. And thank you for your patient listening, but I would request you only one thing. You believe, develop faith only when you have experienced. Pray to God to reveal that. Thank you. Dhaniwad or pranams, Daji. We now take the pleasure to welcome a former electrical engineer turned a monk, lifestyle coach, motivational speaker. He has spoken across the world over two decades, even at the United Nations and at the British Parliament. Ladies and gentlemen, please put your hands together for His Grace Sri Gaur Gopal Dasji from the ISKCON. Dear brothers and sisters, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, a very good morning to you. Who oh, doesn't look like you're happy seeing all of us? A very good morning to you, ladies and gentlemen. We're coming from many parts of the world. We can do much better. A very good morning to you, ladies and gentlemen. That sounds so much better. Can you imagine if we try to keep all our boundaries of genders, religions, nationalities, socioeconomic statuses all aside and come together as one force, as one humanity, 
can you see the power in our voice can we do that again suprabhatam ladies and gentlemen the power when boundaries go away the power when hearts connect and therefore it is a commendable initiative my heartfelt gratitude to the government of india to the ministry of culture for organizing such a such an incredible event the global spirituality mahotsav this initiative is bringing so many people regardless of faiths and affiliations together with open mindedness to explore spirituality my gratitude of course to honorable president of india draupadi murmu ji who will be gracing us this evening for the inaugural function gratitude to shri kamlesh patel ji daji ji or i i don't know if it's just daji or daji ji but since i'm just daji shri kamlesh patel daji ji my gratitude gratitude to all the heartfulness volunteers who have put this together can you imagine putting this event together how hard that is how many of you are good at spellings in school how many of you are terrible at spellings in school how many of you don't care about spellings in school one boy in school class was asked by his teacher seven year old which state of india are you from He said, "I'm from Arunachal Pradesh, madam." So, can you spell it for me? He said, "I'm from Goa, actually." Right? Who spells Arunachal Pradesh? Now, if you spell the word success, the second letter of the word success is U. And we cannot spell the success of a, such a grand event without you, right? Without you. you can't have the word success without the vowel u if it's just s double c e double s how do you spell that word so ladies and gentlemen brothers and sisters without all of you this event is no event my respects to all of you for coming with such open hearts and such open minds to explore this diverse deep space of spirituality how many of you have problems in your life okay brilliant any of you have any health problems any workplace politics problems any financial liabilities any emotional issues mental health issues any relationship problems ladies and gentlemen the biggest problem and the biggest issue in finding inner peace is problems the biggest issue in finding peace is problems how many of you would like to have a solution to problems all of us take your smartphone go to your go to your wallpaper settings change the wallpaper of your lock screen and your home screen to the picture of your spouse if you are married and whenever you have a serious problem look at that picture like this and say to yourself if i can handle this i can handle any damn thing in my life sorry about that joke sorry about that joke the fact is whoever we are problems are an integral part of our life do you think the esteemed guests sitting on this dais don't have problems Do you think they will not go through health crises? Do you think they will not have governmental issues when it comes to building things of this scale? Spiritual or no spiritual? When we are human beings living on this planet, we are all going to experience problems just of a different kind. इसलिए मैं कई बार कहता हूँ मौत को तो लोग यूँ ही बदनाम करते हैं जी मौत को तो लोग यूं ही बदनाम करते हैं तकलीफ वैसे जिंदगी से है राइट मौत तो एक बार खत्म कर देती है डेथ विल फिनिश अस वंस लाइफ इज व्हाट इज बॉथरिंग अस एवरी सिंगल डे लाइफ इज व्हाट इज कॉजिंग थ्रेट टू माय इनर पीस चैलेंजेस इश्यूज problems calamities trying circumstances difficulties is what is ruining my inner peace how many of you felt 
now my health is better <gasps> have you ever given that sigh of relief how many of you felt if you were in a toxic relationship and you have go through a divorce and say ah oh, done with this toxic relationship how many of you had a financial liability and when you cleared that loan you said ah oh. as soon as a problem goes away is when you give a sigh of relief and say peace and peaceful for a lot of people in the world out there the definition of peace is absence of problems why have you come here because there's so much going on you've come here to disconnect and find some peace within peace is equal to absence of problems people think oh let all the problems go away and then i'll be peaceful i say completely the opposite first be peaceful you'll be better off in dealing with your problems right if you say let the problems go away and be peaceful today one problem will go away tomorrow there'll be another one guys my health is better there's a financial problem my finances are better there's a relationship problem relationship is better there's a social problem social is better there's a weather problem will there ever be an end don't wait for problems to end to be peaceful because problems will never end find your peace and when you find your peace and your inner peace it is from that space of peace that you will be able to deal with your problems effectively if there's one thing that the world lacks today is individuals who can navigate through their challenges and be at peace the world is a collective reflection of individual consciousness if i am not peaceful how will the world be peaceful if the citizens on this planet if the brothers and sisters the ladies and gentlemen the boys and girls if every individual doesn't find their peace how will the world be peaceful ladies and gentlemen i'm going to tell you a story and probably give you three or four things to reflect on as you leave this place after four days as a practicing principle there was once a king and the king was extremely fond of art and paintings he made an announcement that anybody who makes a painting depicting peace the best painting will be rewarded with 1000 gold coins thousands of artists came they all started painting making varieties of painting to depict peace there was a gentleman who was screening all the paintings and out of all the hundreds and thousands of paintings he selected two and they were both covered with a veil now the king was to come on stage unveil the each of them see what was painted and decide out of the two who was the winner and who gets the 1000 gold coins the king came on stage he unveiled the first painting what did he say a beautiful crystal clear lake aquamarine waters there was such clarity you could see the bottom of the lake there were beautiful mountains birds flying around clear cloud clear skies with fluffy clouds floating in beautiful swans swimming on the surface of the lake and the king said wow my goodness me this seems to be like the best painting depicting peace he went to the second one he unveiled the second painting the second painting had a dark gloomy depressing sky with lightning in there huge rain showers there was a mountain which was dry no greenery and there was a tiny little branch jutting out of the mountain on that mountain on that tiny branch was a nest and in that nest was a mother bird feeding her little ones the birdlings with great affection and love guess which one did the king reward the second painting 
because the first one is a myth life is not serene life is not calm life is not clear life is not peace life is challenges life is chaos life is mayhem life is issues life is difficulties life is trying circumstances life is tribulations and in the middle of all this darkness if i can have my inner nest here my heart my heart like that nest outside is a gloomy sky outside is thunderstorms outside is lightning i lost my job i lost my parent i lost my spouse i lost this i lost my health i lost my money lost 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 this is the world outside but when i enter into the space of my heart like that little bird feeding the tiny birdlings that is peace the real depiction of peace finding peace within in a world full of chaos in a world full of mayhem and that is exactly what happened on the battlefield of kurukshetra 5000 years back chaos mayhem confusion lack of clarity one arjun standing there didn't know what to do his properties were taken away rights were taken away their wife was disrobed their sons were killed and in the middle of all of that he was on the battlefield now trying to do his duty he didn't know what to do in that confusion and darkness he turned towards his friend mentor guide and guru shri krishna karpanya dosho pahata swabhava prachhami tvam dharma sammudha cheta yachreyasyan nischitam bruhitan me shishyaste ham shadi mam tvam prapannam i turn to you i don't know how to navigate to this darkness krishna please guide me we need a guide we need a mentor we need a spiritual teacher we need a guru to help us find that nest under the dark sky of gloom and depression and when you listen to such spiritual mentors guides such luminaries sitting here today and you will be listening to so many in the next two or three days listen to them not to follow them otherwise you will simply be a blind follower of another guru listen to them not to follow them listen to them not to listen to their voice listen to their voice so you can listen start listening to your own voice if you cannot listen to your own voice the whole spiritual path has been a big failure i conclude my speech with this last four things that i'd like to recommend all of you take note of it practice this when you're going through challenges and you want to find your inner peace say to yourself always in an equation there is a pi 3.1814 you can't change it but in that equation there is an x and focusing on the x empowers you the more you focus on the pi that cannot change you will be frustrated say to yourself i will not waste my energy and peace on pi the second thing say to yourself the world's problems are not my problems at the moment i'm not an enlightened being yet i'm okay to deal with my own share of troubles at the moment say to yourself the third thing i don't need all answers and everything sorted out right now life is a journey things evolve you don't need everything sorted everything clear right away and fourth if you are a believer turn to god if you are a non believer turn to life universe whatever you don't have to do it alone turn to somebody to whom you can connect and take off that stuff from your head and as kamlesh ji patel daji ji said in this world today let's religions not divide us 2 and 2 plus 8 is 10 3 plus 7 is 10 6 plus 4 is 10 and so is 1 plus 9 there are multiple ways to reach 10 
the end goal is 10 whether i have 2 and 8 to be 10 or 1 and 9 to be 10 we are all meant to reach that stage of 10 let us respect each other let us not just he mentioned that we should tolerate it shouldn't be tolerance alone it should be acceptance of each other tolerance of each other to acceptance of each other i would try to say one more thing and add to the beautiful thing he said beyond tolerance and acceptance let us celebrate each other's connections as a great humanity once again my gratitude to all of you and to daji ji and the ministry of culture for giving me this up dhanyawad aur thank you very much gopal das ji for all the energy and the inspiration a huge round of applause ladies and gentlemen it gives us great pleasure to welcome brahma kumari usha ji a senior raja yoga meditation teacher and a management trainer at the brahma kumari's aishwarya vishwavidyalaya based at the global headquarters in mount abu with her innate qualities capabilities and supreme father's blessings she has focused her strength and speciality into a meaningful channel in fact she is a practical example of applied spirituality ladies and gentlemen sister usha ben om shanti greetings of peace from mount abu from our chief administrative head dadi ratan mohini ji and our seniors and thanks so much to our government ministry of culture our respected kamlesh bhai patel baji our eminent speakers brothers and all the ones who are present here brothers and sisters from various parts of the country and abroad it gives me a great pleasure to be with you all here today and share some of the insights that we have on this subject that we are celebrating today the global spirituality mahotsav mahotsav means celebration so we are all here to celebrate and this celebration is unique why because it's a spiritual celebration you have been in many mahotsavs around the world but they are for the enjoyment of the body or they are the enjoyment for the self for some time being but this is a mahotsav where we enrich ourselves where we empower ourselves and we are we recharge our batteries the soul batteries so can we just spare some moments and as brother gopal das said let us go within for a few moments and connect ourselves that with that spark which is inside and relax yourself for a few moments so turn your attention for a few moments from the external world and let us go within with your inner eye visualize yourself as a being of light a soul and my innate nature is peace I calm down my thoughts for a few moments and experience the silence within
slowly and gradually, I turn my attention to the Supreme Being who is the source of light, the source of peace. And as I connect my mind with the Supreme, I allow the power of peace to empower the self. And I radiate that peace around me. I allow that peace to flow to the entire world. I allow the vibrations to spread in the world so that everyone can be at peace. Om Shanti. As our brother rightly mentioned that peace is not something where we find that everything is so serene and we can experience peace. Otherwise people may go to the jungles, may go to the seashores maybe to experience that peace. They may go to the mountains but we all need peace while being at our place, living in the life full of challenges and still my mind is at peace, calm, positive. That is what we all need. It reminds me of a beautiful story that once there was a person who put a challenge in front of many, that whoever can stay in peace, can stay alone in a house for one year, I'll reward that person 10,000 rupees. Nobody took the courage. There was one young man who said, okay, I can try and take up this challenge. So he accepted and he said that, this is a place where you have to stay for one year. You cannot meet anyone. You cannot have any television. You cannot have any mobiles. You, can have, you cannot have any internet connection with you. Nothing. You have to stay alone. You'll get some books to read if you want to. For one year you have to be there. So initially when he had nothing to connect himself with, not to the world, not to anyone outside, there was frustration that was getting inside him. He started banging his head, he started uh, pulling his hair, and he had a buzzer that if you fail and if you don't want to go on for year, one year, you can press this buzzer button and come out but you'll lose everything. So he was about to press the button, but then he remembered the 10,000 rupees, which he was in great need of. So again he would go here and there in the house, but he didn't know what to do. After 10 days, finally, 
He was just sitting one day and gradually he went inside. He really felt that source which was inside him. He connected himself with the real identity. And then gradually he was so peaceful inside. He started meditating. Gradually he got connected with the Supreme and there was so much of power and bliss that he started experiencing that he did not even realize how the days passed by. One year was about to complete and the person who had put the challenge in front of him, that person went bankrupt, he had no money, so he thought, let me just go up to him and say, wake him up, bring him outside and tell him that I'm sorry I'm not able to pay you that one 10,000 rupees. But when he went to the door, he saw a note there and on the note it was written, my dear friend, you have given me something so incredible that I cannot find any words to thank you. I don't need your 10,000 rupees. Now I am on my journey to experience the real peace and happiness in life. So I thank you so much for giving me that. So we all need that peace and happiness in this world. Being and doing everything, we need that peace. But for that, we really need to empower ourselves with spirituality. Just as when a person does not have physical immunity, a little bit of change of weather can affect his health. And some viruses or some viral fever, cold cough can come up. Similarly, today all these things are disturbing my mind, creating a lot of frustration, not allowing me to experience peace because my spiritual immunity has come down. And this is the best place and the best thought that our Kamlesh Bhai Patel has come up with and the government of India has come up with that we need to empower ourselves spirituality, with spirituality. And the day we are able to do that and increase our spiritual immunity, definitely we'll be able to uh, rule the self and we'll be able to conquer the hearts of many. And this is our culture. This is the culture of India. It does not matter which religious background we come from, but our culture is that we need to empower ourselves with spiritual knowledge, with spiritual wisdom and arise, enhance our internal powers, enhance that power of peace which is inside. Therefore the great saints have said, peace is not outside, it is within. We have to go within and experience, realize and empower ourselves with that. Then when the spiritual immunity comes up, then no matter whatever comes up in my life, nothing can disturb me mentally, emotionally, physically. Nothing can disturb me because we are beyond and we know how to handle our lives very well. Bhagavad Gita, in the essence of Bhagavad Gita it is said, Jo hua wo bhi achha, jo ho raha hai wo achha, aur jo hone wala hai wo bahut achha. The only thing is I need to develop that perception, that perspective to look at life, what life is teaching me, what life is giving me something valuable which I can treasure it with myself forever and share with others also. So let us see life. Whatever has happened was good. Whatever is happening is good. And whatever is going to happen is going to be for the best. So let us look forward 
and apply this spiritual wisdom from Bhagavad Gita in our practical lives, enhance our spiritual immunity and then we can see how we'll be able to find peace with ourselves, with others and spread that, radiate that out into the world as well. With these words, thank you very much for listening. Please. Om Shanti. Thank you, Sister Usha Banji. Pranams and Dhaniwad. Ladies and gentlemen, it gives us great pleasure now to welcome. There are only few jeers who accept disciples irrespective of their caste. He is a yogi, a guru, a spiritual guru known for his Sri Vaishnavism. Subscribes to the tradition of Sri Vaishnavism and the designer and planner of the Statue of Equality, a statue dedicated to Ramanujacharya, a Padma Bhushan, Sri Tridandi Chinna Sriman Narayana, Ramanujana Jiyar Swamiji, Vedic scholar, spiritual teacher. His Holiness Chinna Jiyar Swamiji, may we request you for your address please. Apadam apahartaram Dataram sarvasampada Loka bhiramam sri ramam Bhuyo bhuyo namam yaham Jai Sriman Narayana Dear Bhagavad Bandhus, we are so privileged to be here with all of you on this wonderful global spiritual Mahotsav, which is aiming from inner peace to world peace. It's a great Eupatorian ideology, isn't it? But is it really practical? Yes, it is practical when the governance is great, when the laws are perfect, when the administration is strict, it's really practical. But now, are we seeing that in the reality? We know the Lord Rama reached his own place again recently in Ayodhya. And now, Ramarajya is expected. We want Ramarajya, where every citizen is respected. And every part of this nature is also respected. Rama appeared on this earth during Treta Yuga to 
two yugas before probably it is said 1.75 million years ago it is said rama wanted to or probably he is a avatar is to make a model human being or show that to the society as how an ideal society should be we can go on talking about the great qualities that one has to possess taking the example of rama as long as rama was in his kingdom he saw one type of world and he was pretty happy with it but after some time rama entered the real world to the forest he spent there for a few years and then he found the real world eh people are not happy people are enveloped with a kind of terrorism in animal kingdom in demon kingdom and thus in human kingdom too and he thought it's not something that i need to practice to set these things to right they should be dealt with properly and for that he dealt with wali who was an animal in the forest in an appropriate manner and he dealt with ravana in another way to control him then he returned and then started inculcating that peace among the human beings what was called as ramraj as long as there was wali as long as there was ravana like beings rama was not able to spread the message of peace because to practice something from within you need first of all the body should cooperate and the body should be secured protected but that was lacking because of persons like valis and ravanas until and otherwise that terrorism was a strongly taken care and perfect system was established to take care of the rest of the people he was not able to establish the peaceful life what we call in a peace then valmiki said the great sage who recorded that historic time ramo ramo ramai ite prajanam abhavan katha ram bhutam jagad bhut rame rajyam prasasati then rama was ruling the kingdom by practicing all good qualities that he was possessing and he was inculcating among the human beings because there were no terrorist external forces on those people 
they were able to practice those things. For which we need to first of all have an understanding as how to respect each individual. Rama has given a great chance to even Ravana to rectify himself, not to become a terrorist and be cohesive with the rest of the world. But Ravana was not able to listen to that and thus made him Rama to control Ravana. We need to understand something here. After eliminating Wali, Rama was not interested in establishing his own kingdom there. It was again those people have to rule their own kingdom and Rama allowed Sugriva to be the ruler, again an animal king, to take care of those animals. And when Ravana was eliminated, Rama was not interested in establishing his own kingdom there. He was not interested in converting those people. He wanted them to practice their own culture, their own civilization, and their own traditions and customs. He never looked down towards them, and he never wanted to impose his own things on them. He made again another demon called Vibhishana, who wanted to understand the systems, and then allowed them to rule their own people. We know today people across the world are under the clutches of terrorism. If it is just at the sprouting level of the terrorism, yeah, it can be addressed with, definitely with inner peace. But when it started spreading its branches and roots so wide and strong, then the need is the rulership. And then perfect and stringent laws and the bureaucratic system to follow that very strictly, then only people of that land will be able to practice whatever you say. Otherwise, when there are pressures, when there is violence, how anybody will be able to practice it? People need a kind of a security for their food, clothes, shelter. If the rulers of that land are able to provide these things to the people first, and then there won't be any kind of a need for the people just to turn back from their faith, just for the sake of food, or shelter, or health, or they need not become victims for any kind of allurement. Bharat was a, peace, a place for good culture, good civilization, and having open hands for anybody from across the world. Because Bharat believed that we need to worship whatever we believed in. At the same time, we need to respect the systems of the world, whatever they are. And thus we have to live with each other. 
I need to respect you. I need to follow my own worshipping, my own way taught by my predecessors, my gurus and my forefathers. Sometime what happened? The people from across the world believed in worshipping their own but forgot respecting others. People in Bharat also remembered that we need to respect everybody but worshipping our own was forgotten. Thus this country was under the rulership or invasion of others for thousands of years. Fortunate enough we are in Amritakal today because the people who are at the rulership now to this country are able to understand that we need to provide all sorts of security to our people for food, for cloth, for shelter and for their own self-empowerment. Probably recently we heard that under Garib Kalyan Anad Yojana, our beloved Prime Minister assured people that you get minimum five cages of your foodstuff for another five more years. Started probably during the period of COVID. Assurance for their living so that they need not be allured by others, need not be turned back from their faith and adopt something else of others. Rulership is great, strong, stringent with a loss, then the people will feel security to turn to inside and then start excavating the peace. My friends, there are systems which are working well across the world. If you look at Australia, where they strongly stick on to the law of the land and they never compromise with the law of the land. And they never disrespect the systems of others, whoever living in their country. But if somebody wants to say, because we are major in number, we want to fall, follow our own law, then the Australian government will very gently say, it is really great to follow, to believe, to stick on to your own practices, which sometimes may not be in coherence with the law of this land. But then you can go to a place other than this country where you can practice them safely. Please. My friends, why I mentioned this to you? As long as the ruling of the country is not strong enough to protect their own law of the land and a common code for everybody. You won't expect peace there. Terrorism will definitely take place because the creator of these human beings We hear the names in different ways. Let the name be anything. The creator of these human beings created with two faults. It is probably the mistake that he made. One domination. 
and second possessiveness. These two are manufactural defects of human beings. He made the man like this, I need to possess whoever comes on my way. I want to dominate them. Probably the reason of science, the reason of technology, the reason of any advancement is to prove one to be more dominating and more possessive. But when the rulers of the land are able to understand the value of following one's own law of the land and respecting every others from across the world, then there won't be any kind of problem. Fortunate enough we are calling this time as Amrita Kal. You know why? After 75 long years of independence, we have the government at the center who understand the law of this land, the culture of this land, and the civilization of the human race on this earth. We know very well there are departments from the center and never they have taken an initiative to have a department of culture and to do something for that. But now it is probably became Amrita Kal because they wanted to see that the culture is preserved. And the inner core of the culture must be brought out by bringing all people together and talk about how we can be together. There will be definitely some kind of differences because difference is something make everything unique. My this finger is different than this finger. There is a difference. But there is no disturbance. There is difference, but there is no clash. We want these two fingers must be together to work with each other, respecting the system of each finger. Then only your hand will be able to produce something good. Same with religions, same with the spiritual paths. As just now we hear, we heard from our respected speakers, spirituality has so many facets. As Gopalji rightly said, 1 plus 9 is 10, 8 plus 2 is 10, 7 plus 3 is 10. There are so many ways. We need to respect each way. So there are wonderful religions across the world which are able to bring people together. Spirituality and religion are two very, very powerful things which are able to bring people together and control the minds of people. If they understand the value of worshipping one's own and respecting the rest. Let it be anything. I may be a believer in some power called God and my friend may be a non-believer of God. Doesn't matter. The belief and the faith are only for one's own growth not to fight with the other. And if I want to grow by myself, with my faith, to understand others, it's really great. Let your atheism be with you in your growth. 
let my faith in god be with me in growing by myself but let both of us be together why because we want to live in a society we want to be with the society and we want to go with the society and thus we both an atheist and an atheist should go together work together for the benefit of the society ultimately i need not convert you as an as a devotee you need not convert me as an atheist also because our faiths are divine our faiths are serene so let us stick on to our faiths let us stick on to our beliefs and let us worship them at the same time let us respect the rest of the systems of the world this is what exactly rama did during his time he believed in the animal system and hence he did not want them to convert as humans no you live as you are but be with the society don't harm others so made sugriva the ruler there and then he believed in demons also because there are also a few creatures and they have to survive in their own way so he made not them as humans but again he made another demon ruler vibhishana who is able to understand work with the society as the ruler of them and he led a friendly life with them rama was friendly to sugriva animals rama was friendly to demons rama was friendly to the sages and others we as humans should have such a kind of government and the rulers who are able to protect our own faiths and cultures at the same time able to provide a security for all of us so that one need not capture occupy dominate others and then want to grow oneself if that system is adopted it will be really great we offer our prayers to our current rulers of our center who are able to think about the culture of this land the core of this bharat atma that is practicing one's own with res- with worshiping nature and respecting everything as matter of fact that is the very reason why atheists came to this land islamic people came to this land christians came to this land zoroastrians came this land many many religions many faiths many people from across the world came and able to settle down in this land that is the greatness of our bharat accepts everything but at the same time worships her own law of the land and common code for everyone equally this is what ramon just said a thousand years before thousand years before and practiced it to the word and spirit of that and fortunately today we have our beloved prime minister narendra modi ji who believed in this and want to see that it is practiced to the spirit and letter of that worship your own and respect all but remember when such a time comes for us to practice really but till then that is not the end 
that security is only for the physical body but the real purpose of the life is something different that is a higher purpose that is inner peace inner peace is the ultimate so i say from inner peace to world peace or from world peace to inner peace is the egg first or the hen first if the debate comes here are great scholars great leaders great gurus great thinkers and visionaries who are able to guide us and here in our kanha shanti vanam our daji is providing a very beautiful and very auspicious platform for people to discover by themselves but let us all pray to the almighty whom people call as god with different names to provide a perfect government rulers who will be able to follow the atma of this bharat and at the same time make the law common for everybody and make the bureaucratic system also to work perfectly to their ideology and let the ministry of culture take their core ideology to different organizations those who are assembling here from across the world to come out with their common ideology where all of us can work together all of us to work for the society at the same time following our own customs practices and traditions our mangala sasanams to daji for his good health and long age so that he can be a sutram for all the manis to glow well and glorify the human kind for the future peace and future prosperity we are very happy that all of you are here to take that joy of understanding the inner peace and thus can multiply it many fold to spread it to your friends and relatives across the globe god bless you all and jai shri man narayan धन्यवाद जी आर स्वामी जी एंड प्रणाम्स लेडीज एंड जेंटलमैन आई नाउ रिक्वेस्ट ऑल ऑफ यू टू प्लीज पुट योर हैंड्स टुगेदर फॉर स्वामी आत्मप्रियानंद ही वॉज द फर्स्ट वाइस चांसलर ऑफ रामकृष्णा मिशन विवेकानंद यूनिवर्सिटी एंड ही इज ज्वाइंट रामकृष्णा मिशन इन नाइनटीन सेवेंटी एट द इंडियन यूनिवर्सिटी एडमिनिस्ट्रेटर एंड अन्यासन of the ramakrishna order swami atma priyananda may we request you for your address please <clears throat> may we begin with a peace chant shanti mantra this mantra which i am going to chant is from the rigveda how many thousand years old we do not know 
Our ancient sages and seers always prayed for peace and every Upanishad, which is Vedanta, the end of the Vedas, is prefixed and suffixed by a Shanti Mantra. Om Jau Shanti Antarikshagum Shanti Prithivi Shanti Apa Shanti Oshadhaya Shanti Vanaspataya Shanti Vishvedeva Shanti Brahma Shanti Sarvam Shanti Shanti Reva Shanti Sama Shanti Redhi Om Shanti 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 Hari Om Tat Sat May peace reign in the skies May there be peace in the interstellar space May peace reign on the earth May peace be there in the water bodies, the rivers and the oceans. May all the vegetation be peaceful. May the environment be peaceful. And all the forces of nature, may they be peaceful. And the supreme being from whom peace emanates, let us fill us with peace. And peace may prevail everywhere and in me, in everybody. Om peace, peace, peace. Om that existence. I happen to be the last speaker, but not the last word on what is being said. In the Hindu religion there is no last word because continuously it is being renewed rejuvenated Sambhavami Yuge Yuge as the Lord Krishna pronounces in the Gita Swami Vivekananda in his famous lecture on the universal religion ends by saying is God's book ever finished or is a continuous revelation going on is a marvelous book one page of it is the Vedas, another page is the Bible, one more page is the Quran, Zandavasta and so on, and continuously more and more pages are being written. My salutations to the prophets of the past, my salutation to the prophets of the present, my salutation to the prophets who will be coming in future. I open my heart to everybody and in another context he said all of you should become prophets yourselves. You follow a prophet so that you can become a prophet yourself. You have the prophethood within you. Buddha was only a state which Siddhartha attained. So every one of you have that prophethood, the infinite divinity within and that has to be manifested. His famous definition of religion. Each soul is potentially divine. The goal is to manifest this divinity within by controlling nature external and internal. Do this either by work or philosophy, psychic control, by one or more or all of these and be free. This is the whole of religion. Doctrines or dogmas are temples or rituals our books are only secondary details. Taking a clue from what Inspector Daji said this morning about tolerance and acceptance. Swami Vivekananda in his famous lecture 11th of September 1893 the Parliament of Religions of Chicago he said, I am proud to belong to a religion in which the Sanskrit language in Vedas is written, the word exclusion is not translatable. 
there is no exclusion, include everybody. And he said, we do not believe in toleration only, we believe in acceptance. We accept all the paths leading to the divine goal as equally true. And why is it that we disagree? The last day of the Parliament of Religion, 17th of September 1893, Swamiji Vivekananda told a small story, very small, interesting story, very famous story all of us know. There was a frog which was living in a small well. His entire world was confined to the well. He used to swim, move about in that small well. And one day he saw a bigger frog suddenly jumping into the well. And this frog, the small frog, was very happy. He got a companion. And curious, where does this fellow come from? Where are you from, my friend? The sea. Of course, there's a story. Whether frogs live in the sea, we don't know. The sea? What is that? Is it as big as this? It jumped from one corner to the other corner. Then the frog from the sea, he said, What do you mean? The sea is only this much, you think? He jumped from that corner back to the old corner and said, Is it that big? You cannot imagine how huge is the sea. Then the little frog said, This man is a liar. There cannot be anybody, anything which is bigger than my own little well. Swami Vivekananda said, I am a Hindu. I live in a small well called Hinduism. You are a Christian. You live in a small well of Christianity. The third person in Islam he lives in a small well. Each one of us are living in small wells. Each of them being true at the same time. But none of them can exhaust the infinitude of the divinity. This is one fundamental idea which is the basis of a religious acceptance. This is very scientific also. What is the definition of, inf of God, divinity by whatever name you call it? That it is inexhaustible, that it is infinite. How can infinite be truncated? How can it infinite become small? Infinite by definition can't be finite. And a human conception will always be limited by your mind and the body and the senses. That's why the Upanishads repeatedly say, the mind cannot reach there, the senses cannot reach there. If you say, I have realized God through my senses or my mind, the God whom you have realized is only limited, conditioned by your perception. That God is good enough for you, keep it. Now the question arises, how is it that every one of these perceptions God be equally true? If one is true, the other should not be true. Or a couple of them may be true. How is that each one of these different varying perceptions of God infinite be equally true at the same time? Three years after Swami Vivekananda passed away in Mahasamadhi, 4th of July 1902, there is an outstanding discovery made by Albert Einstein at that time as a patent of his clerk. He published a seminal paper which completely revolutionized our idea of space-time. And that gave us a complete different perception of the world, what we called as Wilton Schwann. He said, we look at objects stationed in a particular frame. I make it very simple for all of you. Theory of relativity called the special theory is something which is supposed to be very difficult to understand. 
Einstein himself said, very few people understand, he said, can you tell us the relativity theory in simple words? He said, Newtonian physics said, if all the matter in the universe vanishes, only space and time alone will remain. What the relativity theory has proved is that space and time will also vanish along with matter. So the perception which you have is from a particular frame of reference. A drawing an analogy from there to the spiritual world, the religious world, my perception of God is conditioned by my mind and my body, my senses and my samskaras, predilections, preconceived notions. Your perception of God is conditioned by your idea, your predilections and so on. So each one of them as seen, conditioned by the perceptions of an individual's thinking, mind and the senses, each one of them is different. All the quarrel begins by saying, my perception is right. Not only my perception is right, my perception alone is right. Added to that, your perception therefore should be wrong and therefore you come and convert yourself to my perception. It has been happening not only across religions, it's also intra-religious. How many sects and how many small differences are there among the various sects in Hinduism itself, in Christianity, Islam and so on. Why does it happen? How can each one of these perceptions be equally true at the same time. Is it scientific? Is it possible? Is it true? So I have two minutes more. This is the problem of being the last speaker. Now, how can each of one of them be equally true is a question which is answered by Einstein by saying, Nature does not have any preferred frame of reference. There are so many frames of reference which you have. As Eddington in his famous book, The Nature of the Physical World says, you have a libel here, the rightness. You are wondering to which frame you will attach this. And you are puzzled, look at the label, it's a blank label. Rightness in regard to frames of reference is a blank label. Nobody can assert this is only the right way of looking at God or the divinity. Each one of them is right because it depends on the frame from which you see this. There is a phenomenon called Fitzgerald's contraction in relativity which says a moving rod contracts along the line of its motion. A 10 foot rod can appear to be 4 foot or 3 foot or even 12 according to the frames of reference. Suppose you ask which is the actual length of the rod? The answer is each one of them is true and the actuality which you are asking for cannot be found except beyond the frames of reference which condition you. This is an important thing to realize. Very simple, and when you talk of individual peace and the world peace, which is the theme here, Swami Vivekananda once again referred to his realization in Almora in Mayavati, where he re realized the oneness of the microcosm and the macrocosm. This is also a scientific idea. Every scientific idea has this idea, I, the macrocosm, which is small, and the microcosm, which is vast. We call it Vyashti and Samashti in Vedanta. Entire world is there within you and you are the world and the world is you. And the peace which you find within permeates and percolates everywhere and the peace is not possible without happiness. There is one more point which I want to highlight and stop. We, everybody wants joy. Where do we find joy? The Upanishad says, yeah, the bhuma vaitat sukham na alpe sukhamasti. Only in the infinite is joy, 
In the small finite there cannot be any joy. And without peace you cannot have joy. Ashantasya kuta sukham. The Bhagavad Gita says, when you have no shanti, peace, you cannot have any sukha or joy. These two are interrelated. Therefore, to realize oneself as the vast infinite and which we really are, Vedanta tells you, you realize your infinite real nature. That's what you are. Without realizing this, and if you think you are a small limited entity conditioned by this body and the mind and the senses, you will always be in sorrow. There is a talk about troubles all the time in the world, etc. The trouble is how you perceive it. If you feel yourself with the infinite, then there is no trouble for you. Swami Vivekananda's story once again, a mosquito was sitting at the horn of a bull and went on biting the bull the whole day and it felt very repentant. He said, Mr. Bull, I will go away. I have been troubling you for too long. The bull looked up and said, Oh, you are here. I never noticed you. Come on, come and settle down on my horn with your entire family. All your life, what can you do to me? That is the challenge of Hindu religion Vedanta. We say, I am the infinite. What kinds of troubles can come to me? I am the huge ocean. Rivers may come and join me. The Bhagavad Gita once again, second chapter. Apur yamana machala pradishtham samudra mapa pravishanda yadbad tadvat kamayam pravishanda sarvesa shanti mapnoti na kama kami. The rivers come and join the ocean and the rivers tell the ocean, too many rivers are coming there. No, come on. Any moment the rivers you come, I am the vast, infinite ocean. I will end with one more story taking a clue from what respected Daji said about a drop of water falling in the ocean. It's a real incident which happened in Vivekananda's life. Vivekananda was in Paris in France and there's a great celebrity in those days an opera singer well known Emma Kalve was her name. As most of celebrities perhaps are she was extremely upset, lonely, depressed, almost to the point of thinking of putting an end to her life. Somebody told her, there's a great Indian yogi here, you may perhaps get some consolation from him. She went to meet Swami Vivekananda. He was quietly doing some study in his room. He did not even look up. The moment this lady entered, Vivekananda said, even before looking up, my child, what a terrible atmosphere you have brought with you. Calm down, calm down. She came and sat before him. Swamiji looked at her and started speaking about some of the innermost secrets which she never shared with anybody else. She became flabbergasted, confused, frightened, started crying, Swami, how did you know all this? Has somebody spoken to you about me? Swami just smiled and said, is it necessary? I can read you like an open book. Then he gave her this Vedantic, Advaitic impulse. You are the infinite. Don't brood over your sorrow secretly. Realize that you are the infinite. All the troubles that come and go, pertain to your mind and body they are like mosquitoes which are sitting in the horn of a bull cheer up realize your real nature and think of it the spiritual impulse of this great soul went straight into her she was almost losing her consciousness entering the kind of samadhi she became terribly frightened Swami I am losing myself what are you doing to me Swamiji usually used to say, you Westerners, you are so fond of your Indi, we Jew, Valley, tea. Mocking them, you are not individual Z. You shall be when you are universal. Then he told this story. A water drop was falling onto the ocean. And the drop was crying miserably. 
The ocean said, why are you crying, my child? Oh, I am going to lose my individuality as a water drop. The ocean smiled and said, my child, you are not going to lose your individuality as a drop, but you are gaining your individuality as the ocean. You were me, and the rays of the sun took you up. You are now coming back to join your billions and trillions of water drops, your brothers and sisters, which is the ocean. So, if we realize ourselves as the ocean, which is the truth declared by sages and saints across all religions, hundred thousand times they have said this in all the religious books. They have practiced, documented, and if we realize this, remind ourselves of that which is true, we will also be blessed by realizing we are not small little beings, we are the infinite ocean. And the extreme Advaitic text, the Ashtavakra Samhita says, I am the infinite ocean of consciousness from which the entire world of beings is rising. We are that and such a person who realizes it himself will be a source of great peace to the world. He may not talk, he may not move around, he may not even express. His very presence will be a blessing. Vivekananda said, the power of thought is irresistible. If a great saint lives in a cave and sings five holy thoughts and passes away without expression, these thoughts will penetrate through the walls of the cave, fasten onto some heart and work out there. So this great institution, Heartfulness Foundation, is an example of this. It will fasten onto somebody, Daji, and will work out here and what works out is a result of that great holy thought which has been derived from the infinite consciousness. No human being creates all this. In the infinite consciousness which you call God or whatever name, all these thoughts are remaining there which is the cosmic internet server in which all our thoughts are getting constantly uploaded now and anybody from anywhere at any time can download it from there provided he has the password. The password is the mantra which the Guru gives you. Use that password, download happily from the internet. There is infinite broadband connectivity 24 by 7. Check. Hello. Thank you, Swami. Thank you very much. We have two more minutes left in this session. Let's take two questions from the audience, please, to the panelists. Namaste, Namaste everyone. Um, first of all, before I ask my question, I just wanted to say from the bottom of my heart, thank you to everyone for being here. Thank you to the spiritual leaders um, for sharing your wisdom on the stage. Thank you, Daji. Thank you, Heartfulness. Um, I actually had a question um, for Gorgo Kapaldasji. Um, my name is Ariane Aurora. I'm an actor and singer from New York. And I wanted to ask a question in regards to social media and inner peace. Now, in this day and age of social media, there's always negative and positive sides of it, right? And we're all trying to find that inner peace within ourselves. But social media has become a medium to spread spirituality throughout the world, to spread this wisdom to everybody, especially the youth. But at the same time, social media tends to give a ride to your ego at times. And even in the process of creating content and hopefully creating content with a positive mindset, with a purpose, 
sometimes you get into that mindset of likes, what other people are going to think. And during that process, sometimes you feel like, oh, maybe if I do this, that will be better and more perceived and accepted by other people. And I wanted to get your understanding and take on this. How do you believe we can tackle um, this new day and age of technology? How can we tackle social media, use it to our benefit and the benefit for everybody in this world so we can all obtain inner peace? Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you for that brilliant question. How do we really use social media as a great medium to spread inner peace and not allow social media to ruin our inner peace when we look at how that, what other people are doing and lose our authenticity as well. I have always believed in a few things. Number one is our relationship with anyone or anything in the world is only effective, as effective as is our relationship with our own self. The more we work on our relationship with our own self and our relationship with divinity, what's happening in the world doesn't bother us as much as it would have otherwise. If we find ourselves disturbed, we find ourselves in the mode of comparison, if we find ourselves in the mode of dirty competition, if we find ourselves in the mode of what we would call the rat race, then it also means that there is somewhere we are lacking a deeper connection with our own self. Which is precisely why people who are out, just like a massive tree, a huge tree, the way it grows above the ground, that's how much the roots have to go deep within. If the roots are not deep, if the roots are not strong, a storm, you wouldn't even need a storm in fact, a small, of gu a small gush of wind can bring the tree down if the roots are weak. So the more we grow externally, that's how much we have to do internal work. And we find that that internal work is lacking, the external tree is going to be a threat. So number one, I feel it's critical and very crucial and important that we have a spiritual practice, a sadhana on a daily basis where we make connection with our own self and we make connection with divinity. Because when that relationship is in place, then the external elements cannot threaten us as much as they would have otherwise. Right? Number two is when we are talking about social media, social media today is one of the most powerful mediums to communicate, express and spread what we need to spread. We can spread negativity, we can spread gossip, we can spread hatred, we can spread love, we can spread divinity, we can spread peace, we can spread spirituality. It's a powerful tool. The issue is when instead of using it as a tool, we become a tool. And that's why living in awareness is very important. Moderation is very important. Discipline is very important. If we don't have these, we're going to be consumed by the wave. If we don't want to be consumed by the wave, discipline, moderation, intent behind the content is also very critical. People are just producing so much content. But where is the intent? If the intent is missing, we're going to be carried away by the wave. So discipline, moderation, uh, intent behind the content are also very critical to stay in proper alignment so that we don't get carried away. And comparison has its own value. When we look at what others are doing, we can seek inspiration to follow our aspiration. The problem is we don't seek inspiration. We look at others and we either try to copy, we try to feel superiority complex that we are better than them, or we feel inferiority complex that we are probably lacking something. Maybe if we do this, we will also be like them. Right? But comparison has tremendous value. Today we have so many spiritual leaders here. Each one of them in their own way have something incredible to offer. If you are looking at it that way, we are going to say, wow, I have learned so much from each one of them and I feel enriched and nourished inspiration to follow my own aspiration. So I can look at so many content creators in social media, seek inspiration from their qualities, seek inspiration from their ideas, seek inspiration from their fundamentals, then to work on my uh, own journey and what I am myself doing. And usually I say this just to end my answer, 
I would like to say that, you know, back in the day when people would fast, there would be religious and spiritual fasts. Uh, my, the driver who brought me here has been fast, fasting now, ending for Easter and Good Friday. He's been, he said he's holding a 40 days fast, one meal a day. In the modern day and age today, when we are looking at a spiritual fast, I think a spiritual fast should be a fast from social media, a fast from smartphones, a fast from Google. And if we do all of that, probably God will come down and say, it's okay, my son, my, please take it easy. I'm feeling heartbroken seeing your determination. <laughs> so thank you. Thank you very much for that. Thank you so much. Thank, thank, you. Thank, thank, you. thank you. One last question, please. First of all, I would like to thank all the religious leaders and gurus for, you know, blessing us with your knowledge and wisdom. My name is Himanshu and I'm a lawyer and influencer. So my question is from Sri Atmapriya Nanda ji. So I wanted to ask, like, whenever there is a philosophical discussion going on, people are often unaware or, you know, a little confused about their faith and beliefs. So I wanted to know, like, can you give us two tips which can help us to bring inner peace? Two tips for inner peace. <clears throat> do you want peace? Yes, I do. I think everyone does. Then you will change. I have seen friends who are looking for peace, yes, looking I... for meditation. One yes. of my friends, a very successful person, IIT and IIM, both beginning with I, Unfortunately, <laughs> he said, I, then he came over, he wanted to stay for a week. After a couple of days, he said, it's too much. He said, there's too much of silence here. Uh, just, I want to go out for some time and come back. Where do you want to? I don't know. He came back after a couple of hours. I asked him. He said, I went to the Hora station. So much of noise. And was inside and going, people moving around. I stood there for a great peace I found because this was too much for me. So what kind of peace you need if you first decide? Just like our uh, this, uh, no, uh, the previous speaker said, if you are put in a corner and you will not be able to take it. We, we want but we actually crave for company, crave for recognition. We crave for so many things and therefore the peace is affected the moment you crave this this is the same Gita. Naseshataha and the desire that you have it what takes you away from peace. So the first tip to peace is do you really want it? Are you tired of this entire world of hurry burry and hurly burly and competition, envy and jealousy and uh, people trying to go up the ladder of so-called success. Are you tired of all this? If you are not tired, please go ahead, you will find peace later on. You should be tired of all this. This is the first step that Vedanta also says. Second is, if you deeply want peace, find out what is the way for you. Your way may not be anybody else's. You are going to a restaurant, huge amount of food is there, several varieties of food are kept there. Don't compare one with the other, which is good or which is bad, which is for you. So find out, read everything, this is called Viveka. 
the first is called vairagya the second is viveka find out discerning intellect through intelligence through thought through contemplation through meditation through advice of elders sadgurus upadesha you find out which is the path for you and take that and pursue it we always want solutions when solutions are given in the scriptures by the sadgurus we do not actually want to follow it it is not easy everybody thinks he is after peace but we fundamentally want noise our mind is constantly clattering outside may be very peaceful our mind is constantly clattering bhagwan ramana maharshi the great sage of arunachala in the southern part of india he summa it first to be cross be quiet we can't be quiet even can you sit straight quietly for half hour as uh, uh, gopal ji just now said everybody checks whether the mobile phone is there in his in his her pocket immediately you feel terribly perturbed because your whole prana is there so christ said in the bible where your treasure is there your heart will be also where is your treasure what exactly you want in life if i find out if you want peace you will definitely find peace that is called vyakulata according to sri ramakrishna umukshutva according to vedanta if you really want it then you will be tired of this whole thing and pursue it deeply within thank you swami thank you very much that is this end of the first plenary session in a peace to world peace on this note i request daji to present mementos to our esteemed spiritual gurus firstly to our additional secretary ministry of culture to ranjana chopra ji a huge round of applause ladies and gentlemen boys and girls friends श्री गौर गोपाल दास जी सिस्टर उषा बहन जी श्री जी एस स्वामी जी एंड टू स्वामी आत्मप्रियानंद जी thank you daji thank you to all the esteemed spiritual gurus may i request all of you to kindly come forward for a group photograph request all the gurus to step forward for the group picture ladies and gentlemen global spirituality mahotsav the main plenary session in a peace to world peace a humble thank you and gratitude to all the esteemed gurus and in a short while we shall be